Welcome to the Gals Guide to the Galaxy podcast, where a group of gals gather for you one cool thing around our topic of the month. Is it ancient history? Is it breaking news? Is it safe for work? Well, that's up to each gal. All we know is that... Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Welcome back. I'm Bonnie, and it's Black History Month at Gals Guide. I'm joined by Eden, Kim, and Rebecca talking about our one cool thing. We've already talked about Kara Walker, Nina Simone, and Willis Richardson. And before we get to Kim's cool thing, let's ask a question to get to know everyone. I want to know who's your favorite woman from Black History. So who wants to go first? Oh, I'll go. My name's Kim. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know. Um, I, I consider history just in general, like present and past, you know, just anytime. Um, someone, I, uh, one woman who's really inspired me as I've grown, um, is Queen Latifah, actually. Mm. Um, she has inspired me growing up. Like, uh, she's about my height. She's a little bit thicker like me, you know, but she's got confidence to rule the world. And I think, and and she's, you know, an actor, a singer, like everything I've seen her do, she just steps up her game always. And I've seen so many interviews of her. And I saw one today, and I guess that's why she's on my mind. Um, they asked her who inspired her to keep going, like who was the, her motivation. And she just started bawling. And she, it was the sweetest thing ever. After a little bit, she just said, she's like my mother. She's always encouraged me to do whatever she's never said oh you're just a girl oh you're just you know whatever she's just like do your thing you're strong you're powerful whatever so um she would be my my favorite because she's one of my inspirations that constantly like daily uh like leads me to stay strong and help people and be a positive role model nice <laughs> i would have to say um, <clears throat> okay, so I don't believe I ever met this woman, but my dad's dad's mother, okay? okay, so my great grandmother on my dad's side, uh, her name was Grace, um, uh, everybody called her Granny, um, they lived in, in Terre Haute, Indiana, um, the family had moved uh, from Henderson, Kentucky to Terre Haute. Uh, there were quite a few settlements of mixed race people who had settled in the Terre Haute area. And that may have been why um, uh, my great, great grandparents had decided to move there. Anyway, so granny, dear old Miss Grace, mm -hmm. uh, she worked in education and she didn't take anybody's crap. Mm -hmm. And there was somebody, somebody decided for whatever reason, um, that they were going, that the, they were in the KKK, right. And they got mad at something she had done and they showed up at her house to burn a cross on her mm -hmm. front lawn. Granny wasn't having it. So granny comes out with a shotgun mm. and she says, you are not burning a cross in my yard. And then she started like naming folks. Hey, you're Bobby. I know your people. Do you need me to call your mama? Whatever. No. Anyway, nice. she chased them away because she totally outed them and totally made them look like fools. And no, a cross was not burnt on her lawn that day <laughs> or any I other. Love it. <laughs> right? So, my favorite black woman from history is Granny. Excellent. Nice. Rebecca? So I'm going to, uh, like the last one, I've got a, a few, I guess. I mean, I mentioned a few in the last one, too. But um, one of my favorites that Gals Guide has covered is Bessie Coleman. Um, I <gasps> just think she's amazing. She was a, the first woman of African-American descent and the first Native, Ameri of Native American descent to have a pilot license. Um, she did all these amazing things. Uh, fortunately, she didn't live long because she died in, one of, in an accident while she was doing one of her flights. But... Um, but I think too, like just, she represents how there are a lot of people in history or, well, let's say a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of people of color in history who didn't get credit for being the first to do something, because I think this came up to like Amelia Earhart was getting credit. Other female pilots are getting credit for doing things, even though pot, like she 
possibly likely, however you want to look at it, did it before they did, but just wasn't getting the same um, attention of that time. So so she's one of my faves. Um, another would be, uh, who I don't think we've talked about, is um, Fannie Lou, I don't remember if it's Hamer. 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 Um, and the voting rights um, efforts and civil rights era. She ran for um, Congress on the Democrat ticket. She, I think everyone knew she wasn't going to win, but just the point of it is of her making some noise. Um, she's another one of those women in the civil rights movement that people either Back then, they would have known about her, but today, just maybe, has kind of gotten lost to history. And I'm, I'm waiting for them to do a bio, or for somebody, whoever, <laughs> to do a biopic or a documentary or something about her. Um, I think there are a couple maybe shorter movies out there about her, or shorter bios or whatever. And she's mentioned a lot in Eyes on the Prize um, documentary, which is awesome. If anyone hasn't seen it, I, I definitely recommend it. It's very long, but it's worth it to just see like all the different. Um, other her and other women in in the civil rights movement are um, are prominently featured in that documentary series. So those would be my I guess those are my two. But obviously I've mentioned other ones in other podcasts. But those are the two for for this particular question. I'll I'll say for today for today's podcast. <laughs> the t- cool thing is I did a one woman show in which I played Bessie Coleman. Oh. Um, so that was fun. Um, I got to do it twice, actually. And then uh, I got to see a one-act play um, based on Fannie Lou Hamer's uh, life. And uh, I didn't really know much about her before I saw the play, and it was fantastic. Yeah, like she's not well known now, but she's just so amazing. And she was like, she was so threatening that they cut her off in the middle of her speech to go to like an emergency (laughs) report, which is basically unheard of. But because she was basically just speaking truth to power, the establishment or whoever was worried that she was going to get people's attention about what was was really going on. (laughs) Yeah, she was too good. (laughs) Yeah, that's awesome. What cool. about you, Bonnie? Right. Uh, I'm in the middle of doing uh, research on the uh, suffragists in the United States. So I've been learning about uh, Mary Church Terrell and Harriet Previs and her daughter, Harriet Previs Jr. Um, and let's see, who else do I have on my list? I have a whole spreadsheet of them. Uh, Mary Ann Chad Carey, Nanny Helen Burroughs. Um, the most like famous one I have on here is Ida B. Wells Barnett. Yep. Who's super awesome. My favorite moment of hers is when they're doing the 1913 parade in Washington, D.C., and they wanted to have a segregated group in the back of the colored women marching, the, the women organizing it, um, like Alice Paul. They didn't want to, they wanted to include them because she was a Quaker. So she was brought up to believe that, you know, everybody's equal, you know, men and women and black and white. Um, But they were worried about they were going to lose the support from the women from the South marching. So they they kept it as segregated. During the parade, Ida B. Wells was just in the crowd because she refused to, you know, she was like, if I'm not, if I can't march with my fellow delegates from Illinois, I'm not going to march at all. So in the middle of the parade, she just hopped on in there and (laughs) no one said a thing (laughs) so cool so kim what's your one cool thing my cool thing um well i'm a teacher and motivator at heart so i really love things that pique people's interest into researching more about topics that they didn't know much about um especially since i didn't really pay that much attention to history in class when i was growing up (laughs) so i feel like during my adult life everything's just like flooding in and i'm like why didn't i pay attention but um i really feel like one of my life's intentions is to empower the people around me to be their best self to follow their dreams to go for anything that they're really drawn to um and then i i feel like being born in the 80s maybe you know like growing up as a girl like i knew there were boy and girl things and men and women jobs and stuff like that and like even impressioning um that upon me i know I was white. I wasn't even African American or Native American or, you know, anyone of color. And um, I feel like everyone was kind of told what they could and couldn't be um, in some aspect. 
So what I re- really gravitated gravitated to most recently was the movie Hidden Figures, or actually mm-hmm. the book, you know, The Hidden mm-hmm. Figures, the untold true story of four African-American women who helped uh, launch our nation into space. Um, I think that for me, it's important for more movies and books like that to be out and in schools and in people's public eye so that everyone can say, you know what? I can do it. I can be a woman. I can be African-American. I can be an African-American woman and be the person or be part of the people who were (laughs) took someone into space like they could not have done it without me and I think that really um helps the STEM program um come into place and uh so I'm bringing to the table the movie and book uh Hidden Figures let's see so just to tell you a little bit about it if you haven't seen it um it's about uh four African-American women at NASA uh Katherine Johnson Dorothy Vaughn and Mary did I say four? I meant three. I'm sorry. Three. It's three. <laughs> I, um, sorry. Katherine Johnson, Dorothy Vaughn, and Mary Jackson. Um, they were pretty much the brains behind uh, the operations and the launch of John Glenn into orbit. And it kind of emulates that, but it also kind of shows uh, the struggles like they as women and African American women um, had while they were working for white men, basically, and only around white men and women and how um, it touched on segregation. It touched on um, just, for example, one of the things that's supposed to like add a little humor, but be completely serious is that she had to go to a completely different building, like 15 minutes away and run to the other building to go to the bathroom to be able to even function in the room that she was supposed to work in. So she had to run 15 minutes that way and then 15 minutes the other way, you know, and we already, as women have hard enough time folding our bladders after a certain (laughs) age (laughs) and in heels, you know, and in dress. Um, But to tell you a little bit about the women, um, Catherine Johnson, she uh, was a mathematician whose calculations, and I, I'm just kind of reading it off because I really don't want to get it wrong, um, Her whose calculations of orbital mechanics as a NASA employee were critical to the, the success of um, space, uh, manned space flights. Uh, she was born in 1918, and uh, she won the Presidential Medal of Freedom. A uh, little bit about Dor- Dorothy Vaughn was she was also a mathematician and a human computer, So, um, uh, yeah, and they do on Google, if you want to see like them lined up and see the actual, uh, woman versus the person who played her in hidden figures, they have that online. It's super easy to find. Um, she's the human computer who worked for the national advisory committee for aeronautics, NASA, and the Langley research center in Hampton, Virginia. Uh, She was born in 1910, um, and passed away in 2008. And um, Mary Jackson, she was also a mathematician. Of course, you know, NASA, you have to be no, pretty much a mathematician, mm-hmm. right? Um, an aerospace engineer at the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. And I supremely enjoyed the last part of the movie where um, she really got to take full handle on her on her. T- uh, handle <laughs> um, on her grasp of what she did for NASA since it mainly focused around um, one one of the other people but um, so she was succeeded by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration um, she worked at Langley Research Center in Hampton Virginia also for most of her career and um, she was born in 1921 uh, passed away in ni- or 2005. Um, she went to Hampton University. She went to Phoenix High School. Um, just a little quips about their lives. Um, but I just found it really empowering to me, um, that there are movies out there and they're, they touch on the things that people have had to deal with. Um, but it makes it lighthearted enough for children not to be, um, to get the idea you know, so that they feel like they can, um, be strong and powerful and, um, go for their dreams. 
um, have all of you seen and seen the movie, read the book, yes. and everything like that? Cool. I've seen the movie. I haven't read the books yet. I remember a few months before it was coming out, I had heard about it on a podcast, and they said, you know, like a year before it was even ready, they were working on a movie. I remember being at the movie theater with the boyfriend at the time, and the poster was like behind me, and I'm like, <gasps> and he's like, well, maybe we'll see that. I was like, oh no, we're seeing it. We're seeing it. There's <laughs> no question. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I know that a lot of them were teachers. I know Catherine uh, was a teacher initially uh, after college. And then um, when she was 34, she heard that NASA or NACA, later called NASA, actually. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that NACA was NASA. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't realize they were the same um, or that they changed the name. Um, but she learned that they were hiring Af African-American women to solve math problems. And then um, these workers were called computers. I do have a question. Sure. Um, I s definitely saw the movie. I saw it more than once. Uh -huh. That's what I do. That's what I do, uh, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um, like, okay, I'm buying that one for sure. Yeah, uh, but I didn't read the book. Mm -hmm. So are there things, like what kind of things um, do you remember learning from the book that uh, wasn't in the movie? I was. I haven't read the book yet, honestly. Oh, okay. um, but I was reading... Uh, this blog who says that there's a deeper even deeper meanings in within the book and yeah gals guide I'm, covered um the women from hidden figures it was it last january or so it was last year sometime i couldn't yeah. remember which one it was and i think they delved a little bit deeper into that um but they said that they um definitely delved deeper into um the segregation and racism and um, just the treatments of black people. And they highlighted um, the women, the women's lives a little bit more in the mm -hmm. book. Um, but so far that's all I know. Cause I haven't, been, I haven't, I haven't read the book either. <laughs> I'm horrible at reading do, the books. I hate that. I did some research when the movie was about to come out. Um, mm -hmm. Cause I like being an actor. I like knowing, you know, backstories on films and, and productions and stuff. And I found it very interesting that um, the character that is played by Kevin Costner, mm -hmm. um, and I think he did a really good job. I do too. Um, I remember reading that he got a little... Um, a little frustrated because he reached a point where he was like, why would the character do this in this scene, but then this in this scene. Mm -hmm. And, um, so, uh, the people working on the production basically had to say, well, really you are, you didn't really exist as a character. You're actually a compilation mm -hmm. of a couple of different characters. And so like the character that demanded that they're, that, um, the lady be able to use a closer bathroom and got, you know, wanted to get rid of the whole, you know, these are white bathrooms and these are colored bathrooms was one guy. And then, uh, you know, the guy that used to always kind of be all gruff yeah. and everything that was really a different guy. So kind of once he realized that his character was really a, a hodgepodge of a couple of different people, mm -hmm. then he was able to kind of figure out, how to do all of that oh that's fascinating yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah and it's these little details mm -hmm. that really make all the difference in acting for sure uh something else that i learned was that john glenn um since computers the what we all know and love today with the keyboard <laughs> um were so new people didn't trust them mm. and so he trusted a person's calculations <laughs> over mm -hmm. and he refused he refused to get into the command module and be shot into space without um the one lady uh Dorothy. Catherine Johnson yeah, Catherine. um you know checking the machines figures and I mm -hmm. thought oh that's really kind of like, cool that is some kind of quote that's it's in the movie it's something like have the girl do the math and he yeah. meant her yeah 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 yeah, they do that with um, several of the characters in the movie. The books are like compilations of different women's experiences. They've kind of cut and pasted them together just to make it a good like movie experience. Mm -hmm. I remember the Leah talked on the podcast about one of the uh, ladies 
at the lunch table there was like a colored section sign and she would just stick it in her purse and eventually the sign. <laughs> people stop putting the sign back up nice <laughs> i like that <laughs> Oh, cool. Oh, Rebecca, have you seen the movie? I haven't, but, I, but I've heard like a lot of, you know, just interviews and podcasts and other um, things about the women. Sorry, there's a wasp in my office, so I'm kind of like moving around. I don't know how that got in here. Or maybe it's not a wasp. What is that? I don't know what. Oh, yeah, it has a stinger. Oh, sorry. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I don't know what is going on. That's so weird. Um. But yeah, no, I haven't seen it, but I but like I said, I've I've done some, you know, research and read about the women. I just posted a link on our shared um chat space about the um how the women were recognized and received uh medals of honor. It looks like or at least they were nominated. I assume they received them since that article came out. Um so yeah, so it's again, it's like just being able to rep- like get that recognition for women who otherwise were just kind of in the shadows of history before. And then now it's part of, like, I think it's even part of, like, curriculums for different schools to show them their represent, you know, what they did. And they weren't just, like, and I also um, find it interesting that they weren't just, like, minor in their roles. Like, they did, Mm -hmm. yeah, like, they actually had, like, major parts in the space, um, in the space program and still weren't really talked about until the last couple of years, so... Um, but yeah, but anything that brings light to light, um, women of history is, is awesome. One of my favorite things was after the movie came out that next Halloween, there were a bunch of girls dressed up. Yes. As oh, yeah, that was so oh, cute. That's cool. That's adorable. Well, and the movie was like a really well done name actresses, you know, it wasn't just mm-hmm. like some hallmark movie you know not yeah nothing against yeah. hallmark mm-hmm. movies but it actually got you know like hollywood attention and wasn't just oh yeah we made a movie because somebody had some like pet project it was an actual like legit right mm-hmm. legit right project. they did it and they meant it yeah and i love that the actors they really just brought the personalities out they were they made their own um expressions and they uh they were serious, but then they showed them having fun and being real mm-hmm. people. And they're not just computers, but um, they're so smart. They have like they're real people, and I think they I think that's important to bring to the to the scene too when you show a movie, especially when you're trying to not only portray history but then inspire people to know that they can be a part of history and make a difference and be whoever and do whoever. Not do whoever, do whatever they want. <laughs> I mean, uh, maybe. do whoever you that's want. That's a different podcast, I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. Oops. <laughs> it's Black History Month. Um, Let's talk about interracial dating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and next week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Funny. I'm here for the humor, I guess. <laughs> Yikes. I guess I would bring also bring to the table. I know it's like one thing, but what other movies have you seen and have you like um would you suggest to like put in schools or like show in homes that um portrays what it was like for African Americans in history and I mean I, roots, we know about roots and the color purple, like that kind of thing. But I was looking online. There's also, there's like top 30 list of so many, like it even had, um, the, the TV show that Queen Latifah was in. Uh, Girlfriends? No, it's, I think. Oh, it's Living different. Single? Was it Living Single? Living Single. single. Living yeah. Single, sorry. <laughs> it even had that on one of the lists. And it, I mean, it's, uh, basically just what are some shows and movies I can watch uh, for Black History Month Mm -hmm. um, when you're like me and you're like, okay, so how long does it take me to read a book? (laughs) Yeah. 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 Well, you know what? It's, um, uh, I don't remember who brought up Eyes on the Prize. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, Um, I did. Yeah. Okay. Um, That's an oldie but a goodie. Yeah. I remember why I watched that um, 
in grade school mm-hmm. uh, several times. It, it was a series when it came out, mm-hmm. you know, so it's it's not a, a one-time thing. You kind of have to watch it, you it's know. It's like hours. Over per- of hours. Yeah, because yeah. okay. I, I think each episode was an hour or two long. Yeah. Okay. But, and I, and I'm, I think it was on PBS yeah, it was when PBS. it came out. It's always yeah. a good station. Yeah. Um, that was, I think that... Granted, I'm sure since that came out, um, there's probably been more information that has come to light about certain aspects of it. Yeah. But um, it's a wonderful, uh, you know, kind of trip down memory lane in terms of the civil rights movement. And mm-hmm. um, uh, somebody else brought up uh, somebody who was among Martin Luther King's entourage. Mm-hmm. Uh, that doesn't get a lot of airtime. Oh, uh, uh, an- Justin. Yeah, uh, another guy that was in the entourage was Ralph David Abernathy. Mm. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. you know, at least he has a um, an autobiography mm-hmm. or a biography, one of the two. <laughs> and um, <laughs> you know, but there's a lot of the interesting thing about the concept of hidden figures is, you know, we think about all the names. Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, you know, mm-hmm. we, we think about all the names of people. We don't necessarily think of the people that um, are lesser known. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I really, Fannie Lou Hamer is not really a, a, a mm-hmm. smaller figure. Um, she's really a big time player, but mm-hmm. very few people know who she was, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, and you think there's a lot of people in American history that people don't know very much about. Yeah. You know, and all of them would make very interesting subjects of mm. movies. Yeah, well, I know I didn't learn movie. about anyone we've talked about this month, mm-hmm. like in school. Yeah. Definitely not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I didn't learn. Like, I watched, when I was in law school, I took a class. It was an elective, but I feel like it's one that everybody should have to take at some point where it was, um, what was it called? I'm trying to remember what it was exactly called. It was basically like, social justice and it was about the civil rights era like that's all like it started with gandhi and peaceful protest up through the mostly mid to late 60s because by then things were kind of cooling off a little bit but we watched um we watched segments from eyes on the prize and we watched a few other um, documentaries and other films that and there were all like and at the end of it we had a list of just names and the idea was not necessarily to have memorized all the names, but just to like be like, oh, this person, this person, like all the people we've mentioned who, yeah, like you just don't learn about them in school. Like, yeah, you learn about Martin Luther King and you learn about Malcolm X, but you also just learn kind of like the dumbed down versions of them too. Like you don't right. learn the nuance of Martin Luther King, like when he says certain certain speeches that certain politicians quote totally out of context but you don't know absolutely you know but you don't like learn it that way until maybe later so I was just so having to take like choosing to take that class in law school was like one of the best things I did at least to learn about who some of these key players were because like you're saying Aiden like these weren't small time players in the movement but they just weren't they just aren't talked about now for and probably for political reasons and other reasons that we don't have a lot of more time to go into but um but it's something like, and just like speaking about Bayer Rustin, um, I think it was in a different pod, one of our different episodes for this month. I posted something about him because he comes up on my Facebook sometimes through various channels that I follow or pages I follow. And I posted something. I was like, yeah, I just don't think people know who this is. And one of my friends who's happened to be part of the LGBTQ community was like, oh, I thought everybody knew who he was. I recently bought a book about him when I was in New York and I thought he was very well known. And then one of my friends who nothing against him but just straight white cis male was like no I had no idea who he was thank you for sharing this because now I know a little bit you know about another character that I wish I'd known more about and so again it's just trying to like raise that awareness and like I mean back to your original question like what movies should people watch I mean it's so it's so tough because then like there are some movies that I feel like they just I, I try to be careful about how I answer because it it's like there's some movies out there that I feel like they kind of sugarcoat things, even if it doesn't yeah. seem like it. But they are maybe not sugarcoating is the right word, but they're just not as accurate as they because if, if they were like the real story, then no one would want to watch that because it's too depressing. It'd be more like too, American Horror Story. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Or, yeah. It's like it's too violent. It's too or you have to like 
uh, you have to um, face something that maybe you aren't ready to, <laughs> America isn't right. quite ready to deal with, even though we should be, like we should have been there decades and mm-hmm. decades ago. But, um, but yeah, but it's just interesting to even just be able to have these conversations. And that came up in that class too. Like we, at one of the classes we talked about movies and there were a couple, like I think my professor did like, um, I think Mississippi Burning was one that she thought was pretty close, even if it wasn't a hundred percent, but that was one that, um, but then there are some that like come up just on TV sometimes where I'll start watching it and be like, I don't think this is accurate. Like, I don't know if this is really how it would have happened. Like, I think this is just kind of the nicer version of things. And maybe some of this is sort of true. And if it gets you thinking, I guess that's a good thing. But maybe there's a better version of it out there. But I think Hidden Figures is one that actually, like we were saying earlier, like it was you know, it was a legit movie. It was about, it, because it was based on the book too, that had extensive research that, you know, that helps. But, um, but yeah, but I think there's just a lot out there that's good and there's a lot out there that's just not so good. Right. Mm-hmm. I think that's part of the reason why um, I sometimes stray towards documentaries yeah. mm-hmm. rather yeah. than like films. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, I, Hidden Figures, I obviously not a documentary, but it's clearly historical. You can clearly learn from it. But you're right. Um, there does seem to be a lot of um, rewriting of history, mm-hmm. sugarcoating of history, mm-hmm. Disneyfying, if mm-hmm. you will, of history. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't mean I hate Disney. I love Disney. I'm just saying. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, but uh, I I tend to think that documentaries will give you a little bit more because they're not necessarily trying to be entertaining. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to give you the information, Mm -hmm. you know, so I watch a ton of documentaries. There is one that I put on our um, recommended list for the library. And I think it's also on our wish list. It's the Anita Hill documentary and it's just called Anita speaking truth to power. And I watched it like, a month before the um, Dr. Is it Chrissy Blasey Ford trials. Oh, so, wow. Because yeah. I was yeah. really yeah. young when that was happening. I was like in elementary school or something. So I wasn't really sure. Like I remember uh, O.J. Simpson trial and John JonBenet Ramsey. And it was like somewhere around there. So I wasn't quite old enough to really know what was going on. So I think that would be really good for people to watch. It's on, um, I watched it on Roku, but it's also on um, Prime Video if you have Amazon Prime. Cool. For Good free. to know. Well, that wraps it up for Black History Month. Thank you to our gal pals. Join us next month as we gather another group of gal pals with one cool thing for my favorite month, Women's History Month. Yay! Thanks for listening. For show notes, links, and images from this week's show, visit galsguide.org. Want exclusive stuff like deleted bits and major bloopers? Become a Gals Guide patron today. Thanks for listening.